Hey everyone. Uh, okay, go with it. Go with it. Just go with it. I'm hey, sorry. Everyone. Welcome to Talking Show. It is our podcast. This is the sixth one, I think. Yeah. It's yes, another, this, yeah. it's it's one of them. Anyway, uh, welcome guys. Got some fun stuff to talk about, and I'm going to start us off by talking about something that I don't know why I thought of this, but it's something that I truly fucking hate. Airline food. No, oh, it is Jerry Seinfeld and his jokes about airline Jerry food. Classic Jerry Seinfeld joke. I love Jerry Seinfeld, but um, <laughs> I nothing is worse, and I I'm serious when I say that nothing is worse when than when you are walking in the rain. And your shoelaces, and your shoelaces either come untied or they're just a little too long, and they go in the fucking water. And then your shoelaces, tips of your shoelaces get all wet, and you walk around. And then they like, cause you're walking, your shoelaces go and they slap you, and they're all wet and they slap your ankles. Or even worse, when you're walking and you're wearing like, I don't wear jeans that are baggy anymore, so it doesn't happen. But if your pants or like jeans or something is too long. And it gets in, in in the rain, like in a puddle, and then the rims of the bottoms of your jeans get wet. I absolutely cannot stand you've, that. You've thought about this long and hard. I have not. I, I just all came out. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm over here. I'm like, I'm trying to remember the last time that happened, but I wear flip flops all the time. Every time I've worn flip flops or sandals and I know it's wet outside, I'm like, I'm not gonna, my feet aren't gonna get wet. I'm gonna keep them dry this time. And then like two steps in, you're like, fuck, they're soaked. There's no way to do it without getting your feet soaking wet. What are you looking at? I'm just getting in your frame slowly. Oh. I just thought it was funny. I'm sorry. I'm, I did it like twice already. I'm sorry. I was, just I was entertaining myself just doing this as you were talking. I was just kind of like. Oh, yeah. See? Creeping in my frame You, you can do there. it to me, too. Like, if I'm talking, you can just, like, come in and <laughs> smile into my frame. Oh. It's just like, hey, guys, how's it going? I just thought, of, yeah, so it's, it feels very fucking intrusive. I know. It's like, stay on your fucking side, dude. <laughs> What the fuck are you doing? It's it's my face. Dude, they, they want to be listening. They want to look to my voice and looking at me. Hey, well, the camera's on me right now, so not it's not even on you. The camera is not even showing your face. What are you doing? You gonna hold your breath until I put the camera on you? Stay. The camera's still not on you. Keep holding that breath. Am I? I'm gonna put it on you in ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Five, four, three, two. Are you gonna pass out? Are you holding your breath? No, like it's fucking. I thought you were holding, holding your breath. I was holding my breath. I thought you, you know. Were... It's oddly enough, I felt like Ninja Brian when doing that because like I was doing this whole thing like. Yeah. Like you can only use your emotions. That's what I feel like he does in character. Like he just holds his breath. Yeah, I, I'm. It's I'm very impressed by how he actually never blinks when he's in that character. He did it. He did the character on Hot Pepper Gaming, and he didn't blink once. No, he just he cried just... like a little bitch. Fucking bitch. If you okay, if you eat a hot pepper and you cry, I'm sorry, but you're a bitch. <laughs> I open up the dictionary and I look up bitch, and it's gonna be you. When when we say the word bitch, I know a lot of some people get upset, and which brings me to the idea that I was on I was surfing Tumblr, you know, as I usually do, because uh, it's such a fun fucking site. Gross. Um, and someone was like, yeah, they're just. They're so like they they were like upset that we were anti-Semitic or something. What when, we... when we sarcastically make uh, I, mean, I don't like jokes Jews, about but... yeah exa- see like stuff like that people um, idiots take that seriously. They, they don't like Jews. I knew it. What is uh... they said it in their comedy video that they don't like Jews and that is definitely the platform that they, they would express their real sentiments about Jews on. They said it in their let in, in part seven of their Let's Play of Pikmin. They said they do not like the Jews. You know what? I wanted. I've always had these anti-Semitic feelings and I wanted to come out about them. So I Let's said, Plays were the only way we could fucking do it. There's no better platform for me to express my actual anti-Semitic opinions than on Pikmin episode seven. And for uh, all the uh, idiots out there, no, we do not uh, hate Jewish people. You know, Ryan, I would actually take that as a compliment because maybe they're just saying that you're such a good actor and performer that when you were saying you don't like Jews... They actually believed it. Be- not because they're stupid, but because your acting skills are impeccable. Not because they're gullible and will believe anything they say, and that's probably why they get offended at everything, because they go Stop. to the no. very extreme and don't no. actually think about what they're getting mad about. There are about. no dumb people on the internet, Ryan. That is true. Mm. There are no dumb people on the internet. <sighs> Chris O'Neill liked my tweet. I'm sorry, my phone vibrated and just told me that. Where are you going? Come back. We're doing a podcast. He's looking out the window of the room across the hall to the other window. And Chris is in that room, 
with Ding Dong and Julian, and they're watching a TV show. They're not recording Oni Plays. I had to, I had to assert my dominance by, by staring into the room and banged on his chest like this. Chest. You have a good, you have a good bass when you do that. Yeah, it's better than mine. Mine's mo. It's about the exact same. It hurts. Oh my titties. That it doesn't hurt me that bad, but I can do this. I have a hairy chest. That's very hairy. Check this out. If I knock on my sternum because it's so bony, it sounds like I'm I'm knocking on like some wood. Like I used to do that with my ah, skull. Like an. I don't know. I can do it with Lego's head. I can go. <laughs> Animal <laughs> abuse. Yeah. You're he has like a weird like notch in the back of his. You skull. call it his like iron giant like knob. Button. Yeah. No, his because button. the iron giant has that like nah. button on. He doesn't have a button. <laughs> he has the uh the dent. Yeah. It's like it's like a a button like it's an indentation. Dent. It's not a button that you push. It's like a. Wait, why am I saying button? I, that's why I'm. That's why I was kind of. Yeah, it's, it's not a. I'm sorry. He has a like a Inden indentation, like a little dent. That's the word I'm looking for. He has a dent in his head, oh, no, and yeah. you know how when it pops out, he goes psycho. He goes like crazy. So Lego has like a like a thing on the back of his skull, it's and like, then if I like put my yeah, <laughs> yeah, if I put my finger on, he's like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just so, don't think he likes not seeing what's touching him. Cause he can't. No matter what, he cannot see that. We should start messing with him. We should start like taping the back of his head. What do you think about that one? I, I should start blindfolding him. I should make him think, like, I should blindfold him for months and make him think he's blind. And then reveal that, yes. look at all the stuff he's missing. And then he, he'll he do this. He'll have a Logan Paul moment and, oh my god. It's so much more beautiful. That's what he was Here saying. I am making fun of someone who might actually have been colorblind. I no. do not think he was actually colorblind. I will step out on a limb and say that. He might have been colorblind, but I don't know. He might have been colorblind. He might my be dad's colorblind, colorblind, but... He milked the hell out of it and made a lot of money off of it. So yes, he did. So it's okay. Well, he did say, make a lot of money. I don't know. Well, he got yeah, a lot of views. He milked it too. Okay, if you get that many views on YouTube, uh, you make a lot of money. Yeah. Especially if you're not, if you're just one person and you're not, you don't have to split the money with someone else. <laughs> yeah. And then tax it. We're rolling California. in the dough. God. Yeah, I hate when I hate when people online are like, oh my god, you guys are rich. It's like, no, we're not. I, we no. have to split. Whoa, the Matt! What? There's an earthquake. God doesn't like it when we talk about our money. Not on this podcast. So stop it. Sorry, God. I <sighs> make I make about a hundred dollars a year. God's such a fucking stickler for money. Oh, he loves money. He created it. So. He's the king of the Jews. I I think that I'm somewhat stupid. I mean, you can go back. We all are. Yeah, we're all stupid in our own way. Mine happens to be, uh, I never paid attention really in school. I, I got decent grades throughout high school and then just uh, did not care through college. So when it comes to a general education, I am fucked. Yeah, you know what, to be honest, I, okay, I can, I can say this because I am not in college, I am not in school, I am out in the real world, so I, I am able to actually, a lot of people that watch us are still in school. Yeah. So I can safely say, I only, only about 10% of what you learn, you will actually need or use. So much of what you learn is bullshit. And I, and I mean, I get the argument where it's like, but it's helping you learn how to learn. It's like, yeah, but you know, like, all that out, like, there have been some math things that have been like, oh, I remember that from school. I'm glad I remember that. But for the most part, like, 95% of every math class I've ever taken, every science, the science classes were just cool. I liked learning that stuff. So I still remember a lot of that stuff. But like history too, I, I actually history is pretty important. What's the, what's the difference? What's one of the differences between a plant cell and animal cell? Uh, the mitochondria. No, no, no. The uh, the chloroform, chlorophyll, Chlo uh, the green stuff, the stuff that makes it green. Chloroplast. Chloroplast. They I also they also the cell wall. Yeah, and that stuff's great, but it's like, when when's the last time you used? You that? might be wrong on that too. When's the last time you used that in in the real world? I don't know. I feel like school always goes above and beyond. Like it, like here's here's the point. Like here's the stuff that you need to know. Then it goes beyond that. But it on grades this, but, everyone. But, but then on the same plane, you can reverse it and you can go further down. That like, you 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 get to that point with math. But then it's like you can also learn how to do your fucking taxes. But you don't. You just they go. Don't teach up, you that in school. You go above the point necessary and beyond, uh, learning stuff to the point where you. I don't know. School when it did that, it trained me to kind of not. Take in information. You only me you remember you you take it in for a short time, regurgitate it back onto the paper for, for the test, and then you forget about it. I seriously have forgotten like everything I learned in school, which is pretty bad because like I know this is oversaid, but they don't teach you how to do your taxes. They don't teach you how to like take out a, a loan or any of that stuff. stuff Change you, a spare tire. Yeah, stuff you use in the real world. 
And now that I'm out of school and I'm out in the real world. And out of the closet. <laughs> can you think of anything in school that you actually like found useful that you learned after you got out of education and out into the world? Uh, I honestly say like the most important thing I learned was in kindergarten and that's yeah, just the, the ABCs. Stuff. Yeah. That's just learn learning learning the language of English is probably the most important thing. So English class is probably the most prominent of the things that uh, I benefited from. Yeah. And then after that would be math. And then after math would be history. Math, I you know, to be honest. No, I feel like math is more important than the other subjects. Early math. Because then once you start doing calculus and shit, it's like, no, this science is great is very and important too. Yeah. But once you get to like stuff like calculus, it's like, I'm never going to use this shit. And I'm sure it's going to be a bunch of comments. That's, that's what I'm talking about before and beyond, like above and beyond. Yeah. Like that's just, I wish they that would, should be like for people who want to like become a math teacher and shit like that. I think it's dumb to grade every <laughs> single person on the same standards of learning this super complicated shit. Yeah. Because... You know, it's like, I understand. Am I sniffing a lot? I'm sorry. I don't know. I, I haven't noticed. <laughs> Seriously, you learn, like, up to a certain point. I'm talking, when I, when I say stuff, I mainly mean stuff like higher level math that you learn in high school. Uh, like, I have actually used some algebra here and there. Um, well, algebra is important. There is some actually very important algebra that you will use in your everyday life. And sometimes, I guess, we use math for YouTube stuff. Uh, but other but than... But you have calculate. Yeah, but if no one learns math, then the calculators get smart and they take over. Then what do you do? Blum! Because then only they know math and Blum! we all know math. Blum! Blum! Whoa. Bum, bum. Can you please stop shaking the table, Ryan? I'm trying to do a podcast here. Ryan, I'm trying to do a podcast here. Ryan, please stop shaking that. I'm looking. The mic is picking that up. Look. No, now you're not shaking it. I see it. I see the waveform. It's going. Whoop, 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 whoop. Especially once I add dynamics processing to this audio, it's gonna go. Like, okay, I have a question. This has to do with noise. Um, are you like easily like susceptible to like jump scares and shit like that? Mm. Ah! Yep, I am. There so we go. Just, yep. Very clever, Ryan. Just a, just a question I wanted to ask. I was, I well, I learned something about myself. I thought I wasn't, but then that scared the shit out. <laughs> you're of like, you're like, nah. <laughs> you scared me the, the shit out of that. Didn't I, that sentence made no sense? You scared me the shit out of the other night. I scared the shit out of you the other night. But it's, I do it in a way like I don't like being like, oh, like no. Ooh, did I scare you again? Did you just jump again? No. You, you know, this is this is how Ryan scared me the other night. I was. We were talking in the living room, and we were about to like leave the apartment. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta take a piss. I gotta drain the main vein. So I go into my room, and I go in my bathroom, and you know, I'm in my room. So I just have my bathroom door wide open, and I'm springing a leak, and I'm standing there, and then like I'm, I'm peeing, and I pee for a minute, and when I finish, and I like, you're, you're probably one of your most vulnerable. I shake my little waiter, and then I flush the toilet, and I turn around, and you're just standing in the door, just. That far from you, just standing there, not even staring like, at you. Yeah, you do that all the time. Like, or what I'll do is like you'll be like doing something in your bed, and I'll just like I'll kind of sneak in your room a little bit, and then I'll just stare like in the doorway. I'll stand and like have something kind of blocking me, but like make eye contact with you. And the thing is that I've learned is that if it's it's people's brains, like they'll look at something, and when they register that it's like someone's eyes looking at them, because at first they're like looking around the room. And then when they notice it's like someone or something, it like sends a jolt through Dude, their system. That one time I was taking the trash out, and you that? I was taking the trash out, and you like, I, I went down the hall to take the trash out, and you stood behind like a pillar or something, and then I was walking back, and you didn't do anything. You just walked out from behind the pillar. Yep. But because I was singing to myself, I was very vulnerable and embarrassed in that moment, <laughs> and I just went, oh, and I like jumped, and I fell on the ground, and the the scared the shit out of the me. The best way to scare someone is not by like screaming or doing big noises. I it's mean that works, shit. but it's like I know that it's just fun to do the uncanny. Like shit. when I noticed that you've been you, I think what scares me the most is when you've actually been in my vision and I just didn't register it until and your then, brain clicked. Yeah. And like it's like so I'll be on my laptop and it'll be very bright because it's like dark in my room and I see the figure there but my brain doesn't think anything of it until the moment my brain registers that's a person and it's just like it goes because it's that's instant scary. it's like it's like because at first it doesn't register Ryan it registers person why does that send your brain into like fight or flight is it because is that like instinct of like 
Like because it's someone in, it's someone in your space. So it's, it's someone like, in your space without your acknowledgement. It's, yeah, you didn't prepare for it. It's just like it's like because I guess it goes back to the instinctual shit of like an animal as seeing like a predator in their space. Our, rea- yeah. our reactions are still very primal, even though we're th- like millions of years into evolution. Yeah. Well, like, sorry. I mean, sorry. Well, thousands of years in terms of like humans. In terms of because God created uh, yeah. the heaven and the earth um, in a few days. Two hundred years ago. Yeah, but what I'm talking about, it took evolution millions of years. I'm talking about um, kind of like, I don't know. We still have, we're still animals, so we have anim, animal instincts. But some of those instincts seem very, very fucking primal. Um, like just, ooh. I would like to start recommending music on this podcast sometimes. Uh, so on this episode, I am going. Can you get that out of my shot, please? <laughs> Sorry, it was an accident. <laughs> it was an accident. Like, oh shit! <laughs> Whoops. Sorry, uh, Noah. You want to recommend music? I would like to recommend an artist um, that you actually we both discovered independently. Uh, just and then one day was like, you know that too? It's from '88. Yeah, uh, there's a channel called '88 Rising. Um, great channel. It's a lot of like uh, underground hip hop and a lot of foreign hip hop, which is cool. You should check it out. Um, but I discovered this artist called uh, Sue Boy, which she's a Vietnamese trap artist. Yes. And I see the thing. It is weird that like we discovered that separately because usually I'm not like, you know, I'm not with the music shit, and especially like coming across her, like it was. Weird. I know she's very, it's very like indie, but it's a uh, she's a Vietnamese trap artist, and she does. Very she has it, good flow. It, yeah, it's really cool hearing. I like hearing stuff like trap music in <laughs> languages like Vietnamese or Chinese. I think it's really cool. Uh, it's cool because uh, at first I was kind of like I can't understand. So maybe like the thing was I couldn't understand the language, so I wasn't sure if like I could thoroughly enjoy it in a way. But part of me l- likes that I have that disconnect. The more you thought about it, because you pointed that um, you like the fact that you don't. Uh, yeah, that you can't tell, and I, I thought about that more. You're going like, to it with like no bias, I guess. I, I well, guess like it, it has me focus more on kind of like just the, the sound, flow, just the sound. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, but, but I have um, to say, I'm on your side now. Yeah, about that. I I would actually in a future podcast, I would love to go in depth about uh, foreign music and some foreign music I like. But you should go check out uh, this Vietnamese artist called Su Boy, and she has a song called Doi. I think that's how you say it, which I think means life or something. Yeah. We'll put the link in the description, maybe, or we'll f- totally forget about this altogether, and then the link will be in the description. But you can go Google it. But uh, I think in future podcasts, I would like to, towards the end, maybe start recommending different music that Just people can if, listen If we to. find something, we'll recommend it, stuff like that. And maybe uh, if you find like a good movie or game, uh, you can recommend that to people, so... We, we would like to start doing more segments and bits on our show. Not really going to recommend this, but I went out of my way to watch a movie called The Beaver starring uh, Mel Gibson. It's about this dude that gets so depressed that he just puts a per like he finds a puppet and then just starts talking oh, to Oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen the trailer for that. It was really weird. That's what I've heard. I've heard it's very bizarre. It has uh, that actor who unfortunately passed away. He was in Green Room. I knew you were going to say him. Um, Yuri? Not Yuri. I don't remember his name. He had like a... Anton. Anton. Yell. Yell. It was Yell. Something. Yelnats. Stanley Yelnats <laughs> yeah. from Holes. I, ah, very, Green Room. I want to see that again. Very, I, I, don't I don't know if I can get through the wrist make, scene. That wrist scene is difficult to get through. It's going to make me sad, honestly, because he died, and I really liked him in that movie. Yeah. So I might get a little sad watching that, but... That's another movie to check out is Green Room. Fantastic movie. Um, we saw it shortly before the star of the movie actually passed away in real life, very tragically. Yeah. But it's a fantastic movie. So go listen to uh, Suboy, Vietnamese trap goddess. Uh, go watch Green Room and go watch, I mean, if you think they should go. Uh, check out The Beaver if you want to. I'm not going to say you should go out of your way to see yeah, it. Yeah, call up Ryan's mom. Wow!